What is a plasmacytoma? What are the different types of plasmacytomas? So what, it, let's start with, so let's talk a little bit about plasmacytomas. Because it, it's kind of, you know, this is where multiple myeloma is, is, diff, is you know, different from like other blood cancers like leukemia. It's almost more like lymphoma where people can get, you know, lumps or tumors or like a solid tumor. So it's different. And what a plasmacytoma is, is basically it's a tumor of, of myeloma cells. And um, these can form anywhere. They can form in the bone, in which we, case we call it an osseous plasmacytoma. They can form uh, adjacent to the bone. We call that paramedullary disease, so, so by the bone uh, or kind of coming out of the bone. And then we have extramedullary disease, which is where it's just outside the bone. It could be in the liver, it could be in the sinuses, it could be on the skin. People can develop plasmacytomas on the skin. So, you know, how are these discovered? Well, it can really happen any sort of time point along a patient's uh, time with multiple myeloma. Sometimes they can just pop up unexpectedly. Sometimes we see them happen when the monoclonal protein's 0.1, and when they've been monitored, and suddenly they have you know new pain, and we do a scan, and there's a plasmacytoma. So, um, you know, they 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 are a comp they happen kind of throughout. They might happen at the time of diagnosis. We often see them in the spine, causing these compression fractures. Sometimes they can cause cord compression when they press on the spinal cord, and that's a considered an oncologic emergency that we sometimes treat with. We often treat with radiation, steroids, maybe surgery to try to make sure uh, folks don't suffer from um, um, neurologic injury because if we don't treat that in time, people can become paralyzed. So that's, that's an emergency. But plasmacytomas can occur anywhere. Ah, uh, plasmacytoma. What is a plasmacytoma? That's an aggregation of plasma cells in one area. So it's like a big ball of plasma cells. And it can be either within uh, the bone, but often outside the bone. So you'll see them in an aggregation. Uh, that's what we call extramedullary. So an extramedullary plasmacytoma is an aggregation of plasma cells not in the bone. And you can still see a plasmacytoma that's in the bone that, say, for example, grows out. So it's, it's sometimes not that bad if you only have one of these things and nothing else. If you were to develop a single plasmacytoma inside the bone, it's called a solitary plasmacytoma. And those often can be treated very conservatively and managed locally, often with radiation and then close follow-up. There are some features that would suggest perhaps these might progress, perhaps on molecular testing or uh, finding minute amounts of abnormal plasma cells in the marrow. So long story short, early on, uh, plasma cytoma can be very limited. Multiple plasma cytomas can be a bad prognostic sign, especially in the context of recurrence where there are multiple plasma cytomas that pop up outside of the bone. They are often difficult to control if they're in organs that normally don't have plasma cells, such as the liver or the skin or other organs where you just don't usually see this. What is a solitary plasma cytoma? A solitary plasma cytoma is when we find in somebody a plasmacytoma, usually it's found on like a, a scan, someone typically has symptoms. Often these are in the spine, that's been the most common in my kind of um, experience. Sometimes they're in the, they're, they, can, they can be extramedullary, so there's two, when we're talking about plasmacytomas, there's osseous plasmacytomas, remember that's in the bone. There's extramedullary plasmacytomas, that's outside the bone. Those are much less common. Most plasmacytomas are osseous. Most of them are in the spine, sometimes in other sites. Um, how, we, how we know it's really a solitary plasmacytoma, because the thing when we find a plasmacytoma, we, we, wanna, we have to evaluate the extent of the disease. So, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire, right? When we find a plasmacytoma, we have to make sure someone doesn't have multiple myeloma. That's the key thing, because the treatments are very different. So we would usually get a thorough assessment for multiple myeloma, including the bone marrow biopsy, uh, blood and urine testing for a gammopathy, um, and total body imaging with like a PET-CT or a diffusion-weighted MRI. And we want to make sure there's no other sites. And the only way we know if someone really has a plasma solitary plasma cytoma is if they just have one site of disease, one, one plasma cytoma, nothing else on the imaging. Um, and um, <clears throat> a bone marrow biopsy that shows less than 10% plasma cells. If it's greater than 10%, that's multiple myeloma, and we treat that like multiple myeloma. 
Solitary plasma cytoma, though, we treat with radiation, typically higher doses than we might treat with palliative, for palliative radiation, where we are trying to treat pain. Sometimes that's in the range of the radiation oncologists um, give is 40 to 50 gray. That's the unit of measurement that they give, whereas for a plasma cytoma, it might be 20 gray. So it's a, it's a higher dose, and we're really trying to eradicate all the disease in that area. Um, there's two kind of types of plasma cytomas. There's solitary plasma cytomas, and there's plasma cytomas with some bone marrow involvement. Uh, some, some folks have called that plasma cytoma plus, or maybe plasma cytoma with minimal bone marrow involvement. Really, they're treated the same way. We're going to give radiation, but the difference with the solitary plasma cytoma compared to the plasma cytoma plus is that there's a higher risk of progression of myeloma with the plasma cytoma plus, as one might expect, when we already see evidence in the bone marrow. But they're treated the same, right now, they're treated the same way. Um, and so we typically would give the, the radiation and then monitor. You know, uh, everyone has their own kind of uh, recipe for OWHOP and they monitor patients, but I typically see people every three months and get serial imaging studies for a while, especially for the first couple of years when they're going to be at the highest risk of progression to multiple myeloma. Is total body irradiation used if there are multiple plasma cytomas? We, you know, the, the, the limited scenarios where we use total body radiation, really conditioning for allogeneic transplant. So TBI or total body radiation is used sometimes for certain types of transplants, specifically the allogeneic transplants where people get cells from other people, uh, from a donor. Uh, we sometimes use TBI, um, but for, as a treatment for plasma cytoma, that's not something we would do. Uh, it's really the TBI is specifically part of a conditioning for a, some types of transplants, but not for treatment. Um, so we use involved field radiation. So this is where the radiation oncologist, you know, finds a field and shoots the radiation, the photons, or sometimes the protons at the, the tumor to, to kill the cancer cells. And sometimes we might have to target different spots depending on what's most active.